And now you're going to see for molten salt reactors, there's this amazing thing. We can match the behavior of molten salts in terms of convective heat transfer using heat transfer oils. Okay. And we can put up to 10 kilowatts of heat into this loop, which in salt would be equivalent to half a megawatt okay. of heat. Because which is a scaling relationship between the oil and the salt. It's very convenient. Was the, it just kind of dumb luck that it happened to be so favorable in that direction? It makes you believe there must be a higher power that has <laughs> sometimes every now and then smiles down on us. Is there a student who approached you and showed you some calculations? Because I don't think anybody's yeah. done this. Philippe Bardet, he's an assistant professor at George Washington University now. He came into my office and said, you know, I was just looking at the properties here and the Prandtl number of this oil matches the Prandtl number of salt and re realized that in fact we could match simultaneously all of the key non-dimensional parameters that come out of the energy equation. This technique then is developed right here at Berkeley. Nobody's it was invented it. here, yes. At moderate temperatures around 80 degrees centigrade, heat transfer oils like Dowtherm have the same Prandtl number as FLIB does at 650 degrees. And if we scale to about 50% geometric scale, and if we accelerate time, we can match Grashoff, Reynolds, Froud, and Prandtl number, which means convective heat transfer can be the same. And this has huge implications because you'll notice that in the CF facility, we can instrument extensively. So really the big goal of this machine here is to simulate how decay heat is removed from this design when there's a shutdown. That is correct. Also, you learn a lot. For example, if you get bubbles trapped in the system, which when you fill things, you generally do, they can change the behavior. So in this loop, we've got lots of transparent locations where we can see bubbles and where we can vent them from the high places so that we can get all of the uh, trapped gases out once we filled it. Well, it's really important when you design the salt system also to make sure that it's not going to have high points that are going to trap gas in ways that you didn't expect. Up at 600 degrees centigrade, yeah. it's a different environment in terms of you don't instrumentation. Have transparent pipes and so forth. Yeah, transparent pipes um, are Things tough you to can do. Stand next to. <laughs> you might get little windows in. You can put fly into a test tube and heat it up and melt it, and you can see it. But you can't build glass yeah, can. yeah. glass molten salt loops. That's, that would be bad. <laughs> well, they'd probably break.